Okay, so I'm going to show you how to work out tidal heights and times for a secondary port. Now my hypothetical situation is I'm going to leave Hamilton Marina here. I'm going to steam out to this point here. Then I'm going to sail north quite a bit. Turn back in past this buoy. And then sail over here and anchor around Sean and Shaz Islands. Now at some point during the day, I'm going to want to travel through this point here. Quaker Pass, it's called. Now there's a charted depth of 1.1 metre. This area, Eden Field, is a secondary port. There's actually two ports here, there's North Key and South Key. Now this is a hypothetical map, not real. It's part of the RYA training documentation. My story's not real either, but it doesn't matter why I'm doing it, it just matters that I can. So what I'm gonna need to do is to understand when there's enough clearance for me to pass my boat through this point here. This is the minimum depth I'm gonna encounter on my hypothetical journey. Okay, so my boat has a draft of 1.8 meters. I want an extra one meter clearance. So I'm gonna need the minimum depth here to be 2.8 meters. So I need an extra 1.7 meters on top of that 1.1 meter. So I need to figure out what times that's going to be. Now once I've got my secondary port tidal heights and times, I will then be able to use the tidal curve for the standard port, which happens to be Hamilton Sound here, to work out at what times before and after high water I will have the depth that I require. Okay, so opening up my trusty almanac, I'm going to open up the tidal information for Hamilton Sound, which is my standard port, and I'm going to use July the 7th down here. So I'm going to be there in the daytime, so in between these times, between 11 and 5 o'clock local time. So first of all, I'm going to take note of this high water and low water times and heights for Hamilton Sound, the standard port. High water, low water, time, 10.02, 5.1 metres, low water, 14, 13, 1.4 metres. That makes a range of... 3.7 meters, which is useful when we do our tidal curve calculation. Okay, so the next step is to work out the differences. So that's the diff. The first one is the standard port information. Differences you also find in the almanac. This first section here is the standard port information for Hamilton on my map. That's the Hamilton area down here. So I need to calculate the high water time difference first. So 10.02 using this information here. 10 is between 0800 and 1400. And the time differences will be between minus 12 and minus 18 at the secondary port being Eden Field. So the way I do this is I draw a scale starting at 0800 there because my time is in between those two numbers. So 8, now I'm going all the way up to 14. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's for every hour. So there's a line there with some indicators in between. The second row of numbers, I need to draw minus 12 because that relates to that time to 18. So minus 12, minus 18. Now these ranges could be a whole lot of different possibilities. It just happens that it has a range of 6 just like the hours do. So that's easily minus 15. 16 minus 17 etc so 1002 is very close to the 10 here so it's going to be a minus 14 so diff is minus 14 okay so at my secondary which is eden field 1002 minus 14 is 948 very good so i'll use that number in the tidal curve i also need how high it's going to be at that time when i do the tidal curve so I'm going to create another scale down here using the information from the almanac. I'm going to use the mean high water springs and mean high water neeps numbers here. So the 0800 corresponds to the 4.7, so 4.7. The 1400 corresponds to the 5.8, 5.8. And now to fill in the middle numbers, 4.8, 4.9, 5.1, 2, 3, 4. 5678 5.8 okay so there's corresponding numbers -0.2 minus -0.2 minus -0.4 minus -0.4 minus the height 5.1 sits 8901 about here 5.1 so that if i just put something in the middle being -0.3 is quite close to -0.3 so difference -0.3 5.1 minus -0.3 4.8. Okay, so I have my high water time at Edenfield, my high water height at Edenfield, 
now I need my low water height at Edenfield, which is the secondary port. Okay, so similar story. I have a 0 0.6 to 1 1.5, 0 0.6, 1 1.5. I'm going to say roughly in the middle is a 1.0. It doesn't really matter how close you get. I can already see that I need to convert a 1.4, which is actually just probably about here on my scale, the 1.4. My range being minus 0.1 to minus 0.3, minus 0.1 to minus 0.3, and I could do that as well, but it's pretty pointless because 1.4 is really close to minus 0.3. So the range there, minus 0.3, which is 1.1. Height at the secondary port. Okay, so now I have that information, I can proceed to work out when I'm going to have a clearance of 2.8 metres at this area. So 1.1 plus 1.7 equals 2.8, so I need to know when the tide is going to be 1.7. Let's mark the 9.48 in the high water there. That's a 9.48. We know that's going to be a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 48. Etc. 87654, 9.48, etc. 4.8 meters, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the high water low is 1.1, 1.1, straight edge. Okay, I want 1.7, 5, 6, 7, go up, cross. Okay, remembering our range was 3.7. 3.7 is closer to Neeps there, but looking at this graph, the springs and the Neeps lines are so close together anyway, there's not really much consideration. Whether I use the dotted line or the filled line, I'm going to be closer to the dotted line anyway. Okay, 1.7. Okay, I'll have 1.7 at, it's 548, just after 510, I would say, and I'll still have 1.7. Up until 14, probably about 1400. Zero, zero. Now, these times are UTC minus one, so that doesn't really matter. You can see that here on the almanac title information for the standard port Hamilton Sound. So, all those times are UTC minus one. I'm going to add one now to those, so it matches the local time on my watch. So, that'll be 6 10 in the morning or a.m. and 3 p.m. on my watch local time there we go as long as i hypothetically take my boat through this channel between 6 10 a.m and 3 p.m in the afternoon i'll have enough clearance now all well, that was hypothetical it's not real it's just good to practice these things so quickly i'll do for another day being 26th of may so that is may 26 down here okay so that is a spring tide day so i want those numbers there 12 17 and 18 30 the high water, low water, 12, 17, be a 5.8, 18, 30, a 0 0.6. We already know we're in a spring tide, so it doesn't really matter if I work at the range, but I'll do the range anyway. 5.8 minus 0.6 is 5.2. 5.2, Hamilton Sound, springs. Okay, so that's my standard port. Now to work out the diff, 12, 17 is somewhere between 08 and 14, so, so same graph as before. Eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm going this way, this way to that way. Minus 12, minus 12 to minus 18. So that'll be a minus 15 there. 12 is going to be a minus 16. So minus 16 diff. So 12.01 for my second dairy port. The height is going to be nice and easy. 5.8 already written for me minus 0.4 so minus 0.4 so it's going to be a 5.4 my height so i have my time for edenfield my height now my low water height 0.6 minus 0.1 0 0.5 brand new tidal curve 12.01 13 14 15 16 17 0, 1, 11 10 9 8 7 Zero one, five point four, there, zero point five, down there. I'm gonna need a one point seven clearance. Those times, so one point seven is probably about seven forty. 
about uh, 7.40, and the time is about 1600. These are UTC minus one on my local time watch. That will be 8.40 in the morning and 5 p.m. So on the 26th of May, my hypothetical journey, I'll be able to travel through this pass between 8.40 a.m. and 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Now the next problem here is that there's quite a strong tidal flow of two knots when I pass through there, but I'll work out that in another video. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share.